It's finally April, a month where there were fewer, lighter frosts, increasingly heavy rain showers, and for us gardeners, a ton of seed sowing. And as we get closer to those frost-free nights, we can begin to sow seeds of the more temperamental plants and even direct sow seeds of the less hardy vegetables. There's so much we can sow right now, but I've only got so much land, space in the kitchen and time in the day. So here are my top three seeds to sow in April. April is a month when I sow all of the seeds in the gourd family. That means the pumpkins, the butternut squash, the summer squash, as well as your cucumbers and your loofahs. But best of all, the courgette or the zucchini. This year I'm not going to put much effort into squash or gourds. I am going to grow some mini pumpkins like Jack B. Little and I'm also giving loofahs another go this year. But I always go big on courgettes. Courgettes are a great plant for beginners all loads of small growing spaces because they yield so highly. Some varieties can be trained to grow vertically, but more often than not, you'll find them as neat and tidy bushes, which don't take up much space. Grow two plants and you'll be eating courgette every day. They really are that prolific. Last year, I grew six plants, which was a mistake. I couldn't give them away fast enough and I certainly couldn't eat that many. They really are a prolific plant. This year, I'll be sowing two varieties. The first is Black Beauty, which produced loads for me last year, and the other is Gold Rush, which produces beautiful yellow fruits. I'll sow squashes throughout the month. Some like loofahs I've started already, while others like courgettes I'll wait a couple more weeks. Before you begin to plant anything in the ground, it's important to let plants that you started off indoors a chance to acclimatize to outdoor conditions. It's terrifying out here with wind, direct sun and heavy rain, your plants need time to toughen up, otherwise they'll just fall over when the first gust of wind blows in. To make sure your plants are ready to face whatever the world throws at them, move them outdoors for a few hours at the start or the end of the day, and then begin to leave your plants outdoors for longer periods until it's time to put them in the ground. Each year, I wait until April before sowing all of my herbs. The reason for this is that there's only so much space indoors, and yet there's so many varieties of herbs that you can grow. So I'll wait until the weather is warmer outdoors and make use of the extra space in the greenhouse to grow my herbs. And because there are so many that you can grow, I'm not going to single one out here. You should just grow whatever you like eating. However, I will be growing the staples. That's thyme, rosemary, basil, sage. And I'm also going to try doing things like lemon balm and chamomile because they're meant to be good in teas. My absolute favourite herb is basil because it was the first plant I tried to grow on the windowsill to stop spending so much money at the supermarket and obviously I love tomatoes and that pairing is perfect. And I was so keen this year, I might have already got a head start. Although growing your own is a very cost effective way of getting herbs, I find germination can be really erratic, particularly with rosemary where it takes such a long time to germinate. Have you had any difficulty growing your own herbs? Let me know in the comments which ones you love and loathe to grow. I get the best germination and growth when I fill a seed tray with pots which I stuff for the potting mix and top with a layer of coconut coir. For the smallest seeds I place them straight on top of the soil and for larger seeds like coriander I might sprinkle another layer of cocoa coir on top. I'll cover them with a propagator lid to make sure the soil stays moist and leave them to germinate starting indoors for a couple of days before moving them outdoors to the greenhouse on a sunny day or when I need the extra space in the kitchen. I find that April is a month when I do most of my transplanting. The February and March sowings have already begun to use most of the nutrients in their cell and growth has visibly begun to slow. With these chili peppers, you can see they are more than big enough to be up-potted into a larger container and allowed to continue to grow until they're ready to go into the ground sometime next month. As it happens, I'm currently working on a video about the signs you should look out for to determine when it's the right time to transplant your seedlings. When that's ready, I'll put a link in the description. And last of all, but by no means least, April is a great month to be sowing carrot seeds. Now, if you're anything like me, then you probably hated carrots as a child. I couldn't stand them for the longest time, but then one day I had a gorgeous Chantenay carrot. It was lightly honey glazed, roasted, and now I almost think of carrots of as much of a treat as a good old fashioned roast potato. Chantenay carrots are super small and stubby carrots, which are extra sweet, can be grown in relatively shallow containers and are quick to harvest. That makes them great if you're a beginner or if you've only got a patio garden or if you're stuck with rocky soil. And thanks to the April showers, you'll get a helping hand from Mother Nature in growing these vegetables as carrots require constant moisture to germinate. Carrots need to be sown on the surface of the soil or only lightly covered so it's important that you prevent them from drying out. I've seen people directly sowing carrots into the soil and using a wooden plank or cardboard to force the carrot seed to maintain contact with the soil and therefore stay wet. However, it means checking on the seeds every day because they do need light straight away. I won't be doing that and to lock in the moisture, I'll be using cling film on this container instead. Well, that's my top three. 
But don't let listers stop you. There is so much you can be sowing in April. Here are just some of the seeds I'll be using. And let's not forget companion plants like nasturtiums and marigolds. What seeds are you planning on sowing this month? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, growing all these extra plants means you're gonna need some extra space to look after your seedlings until that all important last frost date. So if your kitchen is full to the brim of plants or if your seedlings have annexed your dining table, then check out this video here for a review of this cheap plastic greenhouse, which I'm using to liberate my kitchen worktop. Otherwise, as always, happy gardening.